Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video, as often as I can before the game shuts down. Obviously, you're going to talk about the Gala Dragalia coming soon, but there are some other things to talk about as well. First of all, Daily Tenfolds will be here from 326 till 45, which makes me feel like... I don't know. We'll see, but it's nice. It lasts a while. Uh, and here's the main one. The things that are being added are Gala Nedric and Dragon Primal Brunhilda. Uh, there is some things to know. This is not the actual final banner. So they'll be added to it, but they won't be featured, I think is what this says. The newly added five adventure Gala Nedric and five uh, Dragon Primal Brunhilda will also appear in Gala Dragalia, available from 3.30 till 4.05 at 2.22.59, but they will not be featured in that showcase. They'll just be there. So just to let you know that they are coming eventually. But anyway, newly added adventurer, Gala Nedric, Shadow Sword. Newly added uh, featured dragon, Primal Brunhilda. Worm signals may not be redeemed in the summon showcase for which they are earned. Worm, worm signals earned in this Gala Dragalia showcase cannot be redeemed in the Gala Dragalia available next. Okay, that's weird that they're doing it this way. We're having back-to-back... <laughs> Galadrigalias, but whatever. Okay. Galadnedric, the true seventh scion of Alberia. Spoilers. He was afflicted with worm scale shortly after birth and taken to the fairy kingdom where Bahamut granted him a new chance at life. Pragmatic and impersonal, he acts by his own ideas alone. Uh, Rising Rebellion, shareable five. I'm going to go over these even though it does not matter. <laughs> what? <laughs> It really doesn't matter what they do, because uh, if you like Nedric, that you're going to go for him and hopefully have him and get to play with him, and it really doesn't matter what he does, <laughs> because who cares? But I'm going to go over what they do regardless. Hopefully they're just busted for the end times. Uh, Rising Rebellion deals damage to surrounding enemies, inflicts Shadow Blight, and raises the Dragon Gauge if the attack connects. If the user has Soul Charge, the skill will instead deal damage to the surrounding enemies, inflict Shadow Blight, and dispel one buff from each target. Damage is 800 over 4 hits. Skill energy will fight as 2,376, 9,000, uh, and 5 when it is a shared skill. Uh, special effect, Shadow Blight, and Dragon Gauge energy gain is 10. When the user has Soul Charge, the damage is 800 over 5 hits, 3,360, uh, Shadow Blight, and Dispels Buffs. You lose the ability to get some dragon energy. Blazing Animus. The skill gauge for this skill cannot be filled until the user has shapeshifted at least once. Grant the user Soul Charge level 3 effect. If the user has Soul Charge, this effect will instead deal damage to enemies directly ahead and foes near them, and grant the entire team a team critical damage amp. Uh, skill energy required 1. Special effect. Wait, really? What? The skill gauge for this skill cannot be- Okay, it's like, um... It's like the prince. Okay. Special effects, soul charge level 3. When the user has soul charge, damage is 700 over 6 hits, 12,000 energy, skill energy required. Team amps, team critical max amp at level 3. Jesus Christ, I think he's the only character who has <laughs> max level crit amp, isn't he? There's not many. Most of them have been level 1, but he has maximum. Okay, sure. Co-op ability, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Co-op ability, dragon haste 15%, chain co-op ability, shadow dragon damage 12%, oblivion pact bearer 2, fills 50% of the dragon gauge at the start of quests and extends shapeshift time by 100%, but doubles the amount of dragon energy required to shapeshift, the user's maximum dragon energy will not be increased. When shapeshifting, Nedric will transform into Bahamut regardless of what dragon he is equipped with. While he is shapeshift, the ability grants him a dragon strike that deals damage to multiple targets and enemies near those targets. Also grants Nedric the Oblivion Overload level 1 effect with it when his shapeshift is undone once per quest. Oblivion Overload has three progressively more powerful levels and levels up automatically after set intervals of time. Level 1 increases the strength by 10%, but the user takes damage over time. Level 2 increases strength and crit rate by 15%, but the user takes damage over time. Level 3 increases strength, crit rate, and attack skill damage by 20%, but the user takes damage over time. The maximum amount of Dragon Gauge that abilities can fill at the start of quests is limited by 50% for the entire team. Blessing of Creation 2 reduces susceptibility to blindness and paralysis by 100%. Enduring Ideals 2, when Nedric's HP falls to zero, it has the Oblivion Overload effect. Grants all team members other than Nedric Oblivion Overload level 1. 
Regarding that Galenergic Soul Charge, while well, Soul Charge has positive effects and Energic Status and Abilities also has negative effects, please check Soul Charge part of the Special Effects section in the Help menu for details on these effects. Okay. Um, I like that he just has Bahamut as <laughs> the Dragon Bahamut, but in his own abilities. That's pretty nuts. Um, other than that, I think he sounds kind of interesting to use. Definitely is a, um... Berserker character, but not in the traditional sense because it sounds like he's also dealing damage to himself and in general inflicting you with bad stuff over time But the damage is gonna be so strong that it doesn't matter in theory anyway, so Interesting design of course it made sense to make Nedric uh, Eventually out of gala. I thought he was gonna be the actual anniversary gala, but it looks like there's another one beforehand There's another one after him. So that's kind of interesting and next, the next unit on this is Primover and Hilda! The game found a way to release one more Mim. <laughs> Even though it is technically Primal Brunhilda, which is in her primal state. The Flame Worm Brunhilda, with her regained primal powers, cloaked in a brilliant flame, she is fire incarnate and burns all who oppose her to ash. Her passion burns stronger still as she stands by her beloved on the battlefield. Awakened Blaze deals damage to enemies in a line and inflicts burn and scorched. Damage is 2,800 over one hit, and it's burned and scorched. Oh, and just a dragon ability is pretty nuts. Abilities, uh, flame strength 100%, nice. Incineration, Ardor, fills 50% of the dragon gauge at the start of quest. It extends shapeshift time by 100%, but doubles the amount of dragon energy required to shapeshift. The user's maximum dragon energy will not be increased. Also grants the user, with this is an effect of a fucking gala dragon on a regular banner. That's crazy. Uh, also grants the user a dragon strike while a shapeshift as a primal Brunhilde. This dragon strike creates a zone that lasts 7.5 seconds and deals damage to enemies inside it. When the user is in the zone, the depletion of the dragon gauge over time will be reduced by 75% and their HP will be restored every 0.9 seconds. The user can only have one of these zones active at a time. In addition, when the uh, one of the user's skill ends or is interrupted, the user will be granted the Heart of Flame effect. Heart of Flame has two progressively more powerful levels. Level 1, for 10 seconds, increased skill to skill damage by 10%. Level 2, for 5 seconds, increased skill damage uh, by 30%, and increased the chance of inflicting burn and scorch by 30%. The maximum amount of the Dragon Gauge that abilities can fill at the start of quest will be limited to 50% for the entire team. Ah, uh, that's really good for a unit that is... For a dragon that is not like gala like is not a gala dragon like the the state of fire dragons is in a really weird place because like i said mars is so universally good that he kind of until the end of the game is going to be the best fire dragon just because the idea of getting all your skills back is amazing so what they do with other fire dragons is they make them good in completely different ways from mars so there's actually a reason to use them like uh gozo the uh, New Year's uh, uh, dragon, who gives 5% and increases force strike damage, and then you have um, Gala Agni, who's Reborn Agni, who is just super powerful, and now you have Primal Brunhilde, who is basically just like Bahomet, or another one of the light dragons, <laughs> I'm forgetting his name right now, um, the newest one, the really good one, um, kind of like that, just filling up the dragon gauge, which is crazy for a unit that is just like not... I mean, the game is ending, right? You may as well make Primal Brunhilde. The only thing, the only negative I really have about her is that you can't use them with actual Mim because the way Mim functions, this would actually be a detriment to her, the losing the shapeshifts. Uh, but the double the amount of dragon energy, yeah, and she can't actually turn into this version of her. Which is a shame. There should have been some special thing in here that made it so that if you had Primal Brunhilde next to Mim, she could turn into Primal Brunhilde, but no such case. Maybe if we ever had the chance of having another Mim, they would have found a way to make her go into Primal, and that would have been awesome. But unfortunately, we just don't have that time on us anymore. So I like it. I'm going to be summoning because, of course, there's a, there's a Mim, and this is going to be the last time... I, this is literally my favorite character in the entire game. Like, no, non I might It's between her and Not. I love both her and Not a whole bunch. So I'm definitely going to be... And it's been a while, too. I think it's actually been... Six months? 
Has it really been six months since the last time I did a Dragalia summon video? No, it can't be that. Shit, it has been a very long time though. Mainly because I only do like one or two multis and then I'm done. But anyway, <clears throat> for old time's sake, I will once again summon from him. The one thing I am disappointed is that they have not made this banner better. Come on, the game is ending. 10% raids. Give me something. Guaranteed five every multi. Don't give me this shit. <laughs> Come on, what are you doing? Besides dying, give me something here, man. <sighs> Just a bummer. It's a bummer to still talk about some of this stuff here, but <clears throat> they seem cool. I'm definitely going to be still saving stuff to see what's after Nedric. If there ends up being a final Dragalia unit, I want to save some stuff so I can make one final summon video and be done with the game, basically. Um, in terms of summoning, anyway. And I want to get my girl, so that's what I'm going to plan to do. I don't know what you guys plan to do, but feel free to tell me what you plan to do. <sighs> I don't know when the end is in sight. They said until July is when Dragalia is going down, and I just don't believe them that it's going to be July. I really do think, like, it's probably April. It just shuts down. Four or five? No, that's not many days. Yeah, it's about a week. No. Maybe it is July. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Remember to leave a like if you ended up liking this. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more of me. Weird to say, but Dragalia is shutting down, but I still make other videos of stuff. If you want to check that out, it's an assortment of things. Mostly Fago, but there's a bunch of other stuff like Yu Gi Oh! and whatever the hell I feel like playing at that specific time. And I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a good night. Peace out.